This is gonna be a comprehensive review of the Vizio P-Series 75 inch. The thing to understand about the TV market, right now at least, is that once you jump for over the 65 inch mark, TVs start to get really expensive, but that obviously will change as the future and pricing goes uh, lower and the technology gets better. Uh, but this is one of my go-tos as far as price to performance. The, uh, you know, the other ones I liked was like the really high-end QLED. Um, I liked OLED. I didn't like the idea of burn-in though. And also those are often way more expensive than these LED uh, TVs. Now this one is an LED array, which is different than QLED. I'm not going to get into the specifics of that because to the naked eye, if you're really not looking for it, it's not the hugest of differences. Um, I've heard of some gray barring and some white um, bars on this type of screen. Uh, mine does not have much of that. You could see it in the camera more than you can in real life, so do note that. And note that I'm, I'm on a 1080p SLR camera here on, on a manual focus or um, autofocus on some parts, manual on others. And so you're not gonna be able to really see the 4K, you're not gonna really see the HDR. Um, I did go to Best Buy and I looked at all of them. I looked at the highest end LG, what is that, like the Q8, um, you know, which was like, you know, four times as much as this one. And then you have like the QLED and then the Sony 900 or 950F, one of the, that one of those models. Would have been the one I would have gone with if you have a little bit extra more, if you had a little bit more money in your budget, I would definitely go with that one. But um, all things um, aside, this is my video where I talk about the dimensions and I talk about how I use it and with the smart cast that's installed on it, um, as well as you know some of the inputs and outputs and uh, some viewing as well. As I mentioned, you know you really need to go into a Best Buy to look at this thing. Um, the Best Buy near my, or you know some sort of electronic store. I'm not brand loyal. But, uh, you know, you really got to look at this thing and typically they have a 55 or 65 on display. I have to say, you know, set, you know, that that's extra 10 inches matter a lot. So, um, with all that said, this video is, um, you know, kind of long. We're going to start in the daytime with measurements and glare and things like that. And then we're going to go into the nighttime, um, at the end and then some of the menu options, uh, as well. So if you want to jump around the video, please feel free to do so. All right, so here it is, the 75-inch Vizio P-Series. Um, kind of their highest end, 75. They do have the Quantum Series, but the Quantum Series only works for uh, up to, only goes up to 65 inches. Um, as you can see, this TV f barely fits on this TV stand. Uh, my wife picked out the TV stand. Nice gold accents on there, nice brown wood. It matches the attire of the room. You can see a little bit of the reflection right now. I just turned on the TV about three seconds ago. Um, that would be my biggest gripe about this TV is it takes a little bit of time to get it booted up. Now you'll notice here it's gonna start on this smart cast screen. You can you know set it up to go to many of the other inputs it has like HDMI and other outputs. So I am using a Harmony remote. Um, the remote that comes with the TV is just fine, but I like the Harmony remote because I can control the volume. My volume up button is attached to the Logitech. You see the Logitech light up orange down there on the bottom. So I really like my setup here with the Logitech with the controls and the Logitech uh, universal remote. So I can control the TV like you see here. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down. Let's go ahead and go down to YouTube here and click in YouTube over there. And this video is on, a, the camera here is only a 1080p camera, so you're not gonna take advantage of it. But I want to kind of show you with my blinds open, the kind of glare, what it looks like. And um, you know, you could see a lot of the reflection here, but as you see, it's really, really bright. It's really, you know, it's the TV itself is not being drowned out by the outdoor light, which is something that, you know, LED TVs tend to excel at. And what I like to do is I just do 8K video. If you run this search on YouTube, you'll find some really cool videos. I know this TV is not 8K, but um, you're gonna find, you know, as you see here, um, 12K, you know, things that 120 frames per second, things like that. So let's go ahead and do Morocco. It's HK HDR. So at least we're gonna be able to check out HDR on here. Um, so let's go ahead and click this. And so you can see, again, you can see the reflection of the room, but it should autofocus here momentarily. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn off the volume here. Um, and so you can still see the glare in the room a little bit, but 
Overall, as you can see, it's running at 2160 resolution at the top there, 60 FPS, and it's beautiful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play with some of the video modes here right now. So as you see, we're on calibrated right now. I can go to calibrated dark. As you can see, the screen got a little darker. Let's wait a second, let that pass. Let's go ahead and move again to vivid, which is just so bright. Vivid, a lot of people complain about this uh, screen that if you look on a gray or white screen, it really just, you get to almost see gray bars going up and down on the screen. I personally can't see these at all. Um, I've heard that uh, Visio has fixed these issues. Um, I, I don't see them. But then again, I'm not a snob. I'm not running the test that people do where there's like a bar test and you can put it on the screen. You know, uh, I have owned this TV now for since around Christmas. So for over 60 days. And I let me mind you, I've watched plenty of Netflix on it, plenty of YouTube on it. I've used a computer with it hooked up through HDMI. I've used the Nvidia Shield on it. And um, oh, this one is really nice. Um, but again, not a lot of white on there. So here's like how white this is. And remind you, we're on Vivid right now. This is as bright as it gets. Um, then you have game mode, computer mode, and then standard. So let's just go to standard really quick here. And uh, you know, with standard, the whites are not gonna come across so white. Now I'm looking through the camera lens here and this, t this camera is not giving this TV justice. The TV itself is much darker. This camera's uh, definitely, the ISO is, 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 is high and thus showing you a, a much brighter picture than it actually is. Um, something you're also not seeing in the camera right now is the HDR you can really see the dynamic range here. Like the Canon, the, the Canon shot you just saw, I could tell that the first Canon was way closer to me than the last. And this shot right here, you can see in the distance and a, a lot of the items are popping out. So that HDR really does come across on this TV. And uh, when I was looking for a TV, I wanted HDR or Dolby Vision. This TV does both of those things. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, stop this really quick. And I'm back in the YouTube. I can go ahead and exit here. So now I'm gonna exit YouTube and go back to the main screen. Um, this is my biggest thing I don't like about the TV. It's a little slow. This is in real time right now, just to get back to that main menu. Now on my Logitech controller and on the stock remote, there is a Netflix button. So I went ahead and bound that to my red button on my controller here. So I could just go over on the bottom of the menu there and go over to Netflix there or I can just press this red button at any point. And you can actually press that button in between, um, I can press the red button in between, while well, it's still kind of loading, so you don't have to wait for the screen to load. Um, and so here we are, something cool about Netflix, and part of this video I also wanna to explain to you, a lot of you are, might be wondering, you know, um, what kind of content can, is, is there even a lot of content out there that's 4K or that's Dolby uh, Vision? And, um, if you just search Dolby Vision on um, Dolby Atmos, they have there. Um, but if you search Dolby Vision, you'll actually see a lot of the titles that Netflix has on uh, Dolby Vision. And um, there's a lot, especially all the Netflix, like Planet Earth 2. So let's go ahead and start there. Planet Earth 2, resume from episode five. And Planet Earth 2, beautiful, Ultra HD 4K, and it is Dolby Vision as well. And so this is just, when people come over to my house, this is the type of content I play for them. And I would say the screen is a little dark right now, so I wanna go ahead and change up, what am I on right now? Standard, okay. So as you see, I usually run calibrated. I run this. Uh, again, my SLR camera that's shooting the video footage right now isn't giving this justice. Um, but mind you, it's daytime out right now. All the windows behind this, t uh, in front of the TV are open, so there's a lot of natural light coming in the room. The camera itself is just focusing in on the TV. And uh, as you see, it, it's looking beautiful. So something else I'd like to do is run these same tests again uh, while the, um, you know, while it's dark outside so you can really get it. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the volume on the TV now. I switched from my Logitech to the TV Okay. So as you see, the speakers on the TV are not very powerful. I, 
I'm all the way at 100%, it's getting more powerful. Um, but not bad, but if you're spending this kind of money on a TV, you're probably gonna spend money on a sound bar or at least something simple like that. All right, let's go ahead and back out to the main menu here. All right, and so here's the TV on the stand. Um, a couple of things I just wanted to show you. One is I'll put a picture up on the screen here of all the inputs and outputs it has. It has a lot. Um, it is VESA mountable, but as you see here, I have it wide. I'm using the VESA mount, one of the screw holes to just keep it mounted to the wall here as I have children and I don't want the TV falling on them. Now you can, I took out the tape measure here because this is, um, you can find all this information online. The TV itself is, um, well, first off, my TV stand so my TV stand is 63 inches long, and the TV sticks out a couple of inches. The TV itself, I want to say, is around 66 inches. It's a 75 inch, but you know, uh, horizontally, it's about 66 inches. It is bezel-less. I mean, you got a little bit of black space here. It's you know maybe less than a quarter inch there, but it is considered bezel-less. And something that a lot of people don't think about, like you know, here is I already have this TV stand. It's fairly new. All of a sudden I get this TV and it barely fits on there. So that's definitely, if you're gonna buy this TV, check this out. So leg to leg, let's just do this measurement really hit quick. So you can see that it's about, I have the other's tape measure on the leg itself there. So leg to leg, and again, you can't move the legs. The legs are in the TV. There's no adjustment there. You might be able to bend these legs. I don't recommend it. But if you're looking at about, you need about 57 and a half, um, inches to go leg to leg and then when it comes time you're also probably going to want to know about width on your tv stand so my tv stand again look look how much clearance i have as you see about 13 that's leg to leg okay tv is 37 and 5 eighths and then from the legs up is about 40 and a quarter inches from the when the legs and again the legs have like a really small foam bottom to them you can remove those if you want if you want to go metal onto wood um, but you're looking at about 40 inches slightly over 40 inches there so here we are 2160p HDR content and as you could see like especially when you saw that tree right there you could definitely tell the HDR for sure. And uh, let's just go through some different settings here. So this is on calibrated. This is how I run it. Calibrated dark is just slightly darker. It's almost identical. Vivid is gonna be the brightest, as I mentioned. So let's run it on Vivid for a moment here. Can you compare Vivid to non-Vivid? And as you see, the Vivid could get very, very bright, almost too uh, bright, especially with these scenes here. And then let's do a couple more here. Uh, game mode, not a huge amount of difference here. And then I wanna show standard. And then lastly, calibrate it again. So pardon the angle, I noticed the angle really doesn't help with the uh, computer mode, uh, but as far as the computer mode and the upscaling and everything else, it looks really great. This is an older laptop, so it's not gonna be able to output 4K, uh, it's only gonna be able to output 1080, but uh, you know the experience is great. Uh, I do use other programs on my computer to get videos, so I do stream through my computer as you know, where I, if I was to download a video, for example, or watch, uh, videos that I created myself on a USB stick or something like that. I can also do that directly through the TV if it's on a USB stick that does work as well. You can use like a, a portable hard drive or a thumb drive. That totally works if you want to store movies and then play them that way. Um, but like I said, I find myself using Netflix and uh, I have YouTube Red, so I use that primarily. Um, but as far as if I was to get movies somewhere else, like with Cody or something like that, I would probably use um, a computer attached to it or an NVIDIA Shield um, but the NVIDIA Shield 
you know, unless you're retro gaming or doing some other stuff, it's not necessary. So here I'm going through kind of the menus and this is where, you know, I, I apologize, I should have moved the camera a little bit more, but just showing you all the different pictures, you can change the color temperature, you can change the gamma, you can change uh, the array to low, medium and high, you can change um, eco mode, you can then get into like the contrast, the sharpness, if you go to more picture settings, it really, really is a lot you can edit with this. Um, I have been on the forums and there are some, as you see here, you got tint and all this other stuff on the left. Um, there really are a lot of things you can play around with on this. Um, with audio, it has kind of these built-in surround sound speakers. You heard the sound. I'm kind of a snob when it comes to sound, um, even though I only got the Logitech speakers. The Logitech speakers, in my mind, are just way better, light years better than the built-in speakers. But you know, if you're on a budget, go for it. But as I mentioned, if you're if you're spending this much on the 75 inch, um, then you can you know. You could spend the the Logitechs are like two or three hundred dollars. They're cheap and they're great, or a cheap sound bar. Um, you also have uh, the network as Wi-Fi or wireless. Um, you have about five HDMI ports, a TV and a computer port, and then you have the smart cast as far as your inputs. Um, it does have a sleep timer. I did find out you can actually power the USB while the computer's off or the TV's off to charge a cell phone or something like that, or you can have the USB slot turn off when the power turns off. You just gotta go to your admin controls. There was a lawsuit a long time ago about Vizio stealing your data. They got sued for that. They no longer do that. You can turn that on or off as far as if you want them to collect your data or not. Um, there is a um, CEC mode for, you know, uh, controlling your HDMI devices. There's accessibility, there's closed caption. This thing is loaded with options. Um, you can update the firmware, which I did when I first bought the TV. Um, it also has accessibility uh, features as well. So it's got all the bells and the whistles. And I have to say, even after two months of owning it, I still haven't quite gone through everything. Like I'm still learning new things every day. Um, but as I mentioned, super happy with the purchase. One of the biggest drawbacks I hear is that, you know, the main boards goes out. Vizio is a cheap brand. And uh, I got mine with a three-year warranty, so I'm really not, or even more, I forget. But I got it with an extended warranty, and I'm, you know, if something goes out, that's fine. For the two months I've had it, it's been strong. My biggest gripe on this thing is that the smart cast built-in is just slow. It's not necessarily that peppy. Um, but other than that, I mean, it senses the right outputs for you. Um, I have my sound through the the uh, digital audio out, and uh, the surround sound is beautiful. Um, whether it's dark outside, light, or light outside looks great. You know, yes, if you get OLED, you do get better picture for movies and things like that. I could definitely see the, um, the, the selling point on those, but you're going to be spending way, way more money, and these don't have burn-in issues. And uh, just look at all the reports out there. You'll see other reviewers, and they'll all agree that this and, like, the TCL – are some of the best TVs as far as bang for your dollar. You really gotta start spending a lot of money to beat these. Um, so for all those reasons, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.